Now let's consider one of Hayek's essays on federalism. This article is called The Economic Conditions of Interstate Federalism. It's published in 1939, and that, of course, is right before the outbreak of the Second World War. You can think of this article as looking forward and wondering what kind of regime of peace and free trade might ever be possible. Hayek had thought a great deal about the problems of interstate federation because he was born and grew up in what was called the Austro-Hungarian Empire. That's pictured here in this map, and after the end of World War I, it broke into a larger number of independent nations. Today, of course, the major interstate federation of importance is the European Union, and you can think of Hayek's essay as looking forward to what kind of European community or union might someday be possible. Again, this is Hayek writing in 1939. Hayek stresses that the main goal of a European interstate federation would be peace and harmony. Nonetheless, Hayek will look at what economic conditions will evolve as a result of that federation. Hayek saw a good deal of how the current European Union was actually going to evolve. He argued that regional protectionism actually would have to go away under some kind of political union. He saw that the need for a common foreign policy would in general lead to a common economic policy, especially for international economic relations. And indeed, the European Union has evolved somewhat along those lines. Hayek also saw that it was likely that a common monetary policy would evolve for this interstate federation. If there's anywhere where Hayek turned out to be wrong, it's that he expected there to be much more of a common foreign policy from the Interstate Federation than we've actually achieved from the current European Union. Hayek also argued that when you had so many nations together under a common federation, you need to ask, what is it with respect to economic policy they'll actually be able to agree upon? And there he concluded that would largely be freedom of trade that individuals in each nation would not want their economic relations governed or overruled by foreigners or foreign bureaucracies. So Hayek, with some hope, thought this interstate federation would realize ideals of freedom of trade. Hayek put it this way, quote, there would have to be less government all around if federation is to be practicable. And indeed, along the trade dimension, that's a pretty good description of how the European Union has in fact evolved. One thing Hayek may have missed is that the European Union itself has been a significant source of additional regulation. So there's another economic dimension in play here, which Hayek didn't really explicitly consider. Hayek did fear for a kind of new protectionism from this interstate federation, and here also he was quite prescient. What Hayek really feared for this future would not be the high explicit tariff or tax, but rather over time there would be an accumulation of administrative regulations on trade and commerce springing from the individual nation states. Toward the end of this piece, Hayek is summing up some of his more significant perspectives. And that is, he's an adherent of the philosophy of 19th century liberalism, which believes in free trade and a relatively modest role for government. Hayek's main point or insight or revelation in this essay is his new belief that 19th century liberalism needs to achieve its ends through a framework of common security. You can think of this as Hayek recognizing that the European framework of the 1920s and 1930s basically had failed. So Hayek here is saying that liberalism should reject a philosophy of nationalism and that liberals should become internationalists and believe more in interstate federation. And indeed, this is exactly the direction Europe was going to evolve in after the end of the Second World War. Overall, you can think of this as a very optimistic essay from Hayek, written at a time when things appeared to be going very badly in the world at large.